And welcome back to the show, everybody. It's potluck time. This is the part of the show where each of us brings a story to the table, just as you would bring a dish to potluck dinner. Okay, Jenny, what are you serving up? Okay, so here's what I want to know. If you had the chance to go to Mars and live in a colony there, would you go if you knew you could never come back? <laughs> well. So there's a nonprofit called Mars One in the Netherlands. They're selecting four people to send in 10 years and uh, to, to Mars to start the first colony there. The problem is you can't come back. You know that going into it. You're, you're there to start a community. You better like the I, people you're going actually, with. Actually, I thought it was 25 people. If it's only four, that makes it's it four. ridiculous. They've <laughs> narrowed it down you're to You're going to spend the rest people. of your life with four <laughs> people? We see the colony going well, up here. They're the, three. Three. they're the first four. Oh, there's four. There will be more that we'll come that. I hope so. uh, in the future. Uh, but they ha had 200,000 applicants. They've narrowed it down to 50 men and 50 women at this point. Um, and there's 33 Americans who are still in the running. So wow. Here's the critical question. Do they have pizza delivery on Mars? Nope. No, <laughs> that's not the critical I'm question. Out. I'm out. The, the critical question limited. is, can you get NFL Sunday ticket up there? Oh, right. Dead. Now, if you have satellites, I would not. think maybe, maybe, maybe you can. a little bit of a delay. You have a pet yeah. rover. I mean, and when there's only four people company. there, you better is be able to do something. Shepherd, remember, there will or? be more people coming, but that's the first crew oh, is four, four people, people, and they have to go through a lot of very, um, you know, difficult tests. Sure, I saw him, I saw Armageddon yeah. where they had to go through yeah. Bruce Willis <laughs> the oil drillers. Bruce Willis is going to go. <laughs> that would be a good thing. Well, you know, these movies no. are still decent. But look, w w why would they just go one way? Why can't they come back? Well, there's the whole idea is that they're starting a colony there to create life on Mars. Right. So. You don't you're come back. You're, you, you are moving to another planet. Well, can't you it's plant your seeds, so to speak, and then, all right, I'm done, and then... No <laughs> vacations, people are, man. People are no. Ready. no vacations, no vacations. People are ready to leave their spouses behind yeah, one woman on has. Earth. Um, and, and her kids. And so is a man who's yeah. in the running. He's down to the last 50. Well, I'm glad and that we have some people who are that passionate about space travel. It certainly isn't me, but it's great that we have some yeah. people who want to do it. it's more to be historic, right? So yeah. you can say, hey... Well, if you can't say hey, who moved to Mars and never came back. Who are you going to say it to? The three people you're there? <laughs> yeah, that's, 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 right. that's my biggest problem. You have to spend the rest of your life with. What if you don't, don't like, like them? them? I know. Right. But some people, you know, Good they point. say you, you have won't. only one life. Them. They're really interested in space, you well, know. That's what it has to and be. so, has to be to, for them, this is a lifetime dream, so. You know how ridiculous it is, though, because it's not like they could go outside and play on Mars. <laughs> right. You'll be like, it's the same thing as being in here. Right. It wouldn't be any different. It wouldn't be crazy. Would you go? I don't think Maybe I would. Maybe the four of us should that's go. A really, oh, that's a really hard yeah, decision. Get, you get along great. That would work out really well. Oh, boy. All right. Yeah. Let's move on to our next potluck. And what are you cooking up, Heather? So you see in the media today all this talk about Bruce Jenner and whether or not he's going to be charged with manslaughter for the car accident that he was in. And in the meantime, in Brooklyn, there is the most fascinating trial going on about the 2009 Al-Qaeda plot to commit terrorism in Manchester, Copenhagen, and, and here in New York City. The Brooklyn case is Loretta Lynch is the one who's prosecuting it. She's sitting in the courtroom. British intelligence officers are going to testify in disguise in so that drag. they can't be recognized. Yeah, in drag, really. really. Yeah. And on top of that, that, we're going to see documents that were found during the raid on bin Laden's compound that have never been seen before. And all of this is absolutely fascinating to me, and no one even talks about it. It just in, <laughs> intrigues me where we go with our interest, and especially when it comes to court cases. I mean, this case, if I could, I'd be sitting there every day. Yeah. You would, right? Yeah, absolutely. I don't know if they'd let us in, but you're absolutely right, Heather. It's a fascinating case, and, and the elements of it, you couldn't make it up. You're, you've got it exactly right. Well, and on top of that, he's defending himself. Yes. And he's mm -hmm. claiming that he was not looking to commit terrorism. He was not mm -hmm. looking to hurt anybody. He was looking for a wife. And all this online activity that he was doing, because they use code names that are female right. names and code words like marriage instead of bomb. They, right. Well, they would, they would uh, identify, this is how they were using email to mm -hmm. disguise their emails. They would identify the bomb he was planning to use by the, the women's name. Right. He, he ended up choosing the Nadia. Right. Now, who knows what the Nadia bomb was, but that is how they were doing this. Mm -hmm. And he was pretending to be a woman. Right, but he said he was doing to draw in other women. So I'm not a terrorist. But his goal was to find a wife. 
No, no, no. no. That's what his defense that was. That's what oh, does. okay. That's, that's what, what his defense, defense is. is. It was he's saying dope. that I wasn't trying to commit terrorism. I was out there looking defense. for a woman. Yeah, and, and he's defending himself. So he's up there talking to this jury saying, I just wanted to find a wife. Right. That's all you know, that's going on point, here. To your point, honestly, I think people will be outside the courthouse picketing because they think there's transgender people in there. Right? <laughs> you know, before they will actually pay attention to what's actually You know what? They're going to think it's the Chelsea Manning trial all over again or something, right? I mean, that's a possibility. Yeah, but Heather's right. It's not getting attention. It's not. Even more interesting to me in some ways than the Boston bomber trial because it has so many yeah. different factors. Yeah. And when you talk about these intelligence officers mm -hmm. testifying in disguise, it's well, going to be fun to watch. Either way, that, that defense isn't going to fly. I mean, everybody just blames Tinder when, in these sort of situations. Yeah, you know. <laughs> That's where you get your wives, Tinder. people, yeah. or at least, you know, Tinder's Mrs. Right Now. Uh, all right, well, when we return, we will serve up more potluck. And then later, it's time for Yay or Nay, which is the new best part of the show. This is The Daily Wrap, and it's only on Newsmax TV. Welcome back to Daily Wrap, everybody. I am Joe Conchi, and we are in the middle of our little potluck here, and this is the third course of four. Rick Unger, what culinary masterpiece do you have for us? Well, this is going to be one of my, I'm going to speak to the president. We have the camera here. Mr. President, time to chill out. I've liked the points you've been making about how we need to be sensitive to, to Muslims who are not terrorists. I get it. I got you what you were trying to say in, in your prayer book. Uh, or your prayer meeting, I, I've got it. But you know what? Enough already. Because what's happening now is you're beginning to, in your effort to, to protect and defend Muslim sensitivities, which is fine, you're sticking your thumb in the eye of people who don't share your sensitivities. You made your point, it's time to go. What got me started on this, there was an article today that the president wrote, an op-ed in the LA Times, and I'm gonna read this sentence. Efforts to counter violent extremism will only succeed if citizens can address legitimate grievances through the democratic process. What he's saying is terrorists have legitimate grievances too. You know what? He may well be right about that, but you know, right now, right now, enough. Do you enough. think that he is more interested in being a Nobel Peace Prize winner than a president? No, I he's already won one. He I know, but that's the point. And, and he wants he wears to? that mantle. And, he's, and part of the reason he won that award is because of the relationship with Muslims. And, mm -hmm. and so I think that that is his goal. And he cares less about acting as a president. Well, I Heather, I think it's fairness, because it's he really understands that the more anti-Muslim sentiment there is in our country, and there is a lot right now, the more likely we are to have lone wolves who get really angry and there frustrated. Are no lone wolves. And yes, there are. There, we yeah, see are. what which has happened in Denmark and Paris. They're not Paris, lone wolves. They're but part they're of a bigger thing. Let's they're not. Let's not. Yeah. It's a let's term it for someone truth. who does a one-off. Act because they believe that they're connected with ISIS. Rick, or would you other say that Nadal Hassan uh, in Fort Hood was a, a lone wolf? No, I wouldn't. Yeah, he, was a he was a the terrorist. He was a terrorist who was who was a radicalized. The radicalized, yeah. He's a terrorist. Look, and, you know, I, quote, I, the, the terminology I, notwithstanding, he is very smart to continue to talk about the fact that we have to. Pull no, our smart. Muslim to brothers continue. and sisters together he's and be part to of this but fight. While he does that, Jenny, he's alienating the rest of us. Right. Why? And that's because he he does not speak at the prayer What's breakfast. So alienating? At the prayer breakfast, he says things that that were done in the name of Christ. So what? But he does not ever say anything positive about the other religions. And then yet today, I don't know if I heard anything any mention of Christianity or Judaism. I heard a lot about the little Muslim girl. Because that's the issue at hand right now. No, that's the big thing that's well, all but over that, the media. Well, 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 excuse me then you make the point. If that's the issue, then you can't forget. And by the way, I'm on his side of this. I'm sensitive to American Muslims' feelings and Muslims around the world also. I know that there's lots of them are awesome people. But that is the point. At a point he has to remember that he is the president of, of all the United that's States. Yes. And you can make the point to them and you can get them to hopefully think about it. But if you keep pushing that point, to, to the excess. To the exclusion of the others. It's that is the yeah. problem. It is not it, we we know how he feels about this, but it's that, that's not enough. 
I, I, I'm just impressed that Rick is doing what I'm doing right now and address the president directly. Not only does Holder <laughs> watch the show in Axelrod, but I apparently know, the president yeah, does, is watching does. Newsmax right now because they have direct TV at the White House. I've heard that. That's hard. Anyway, it's uh, my turn, and this is supposed to be a nice, light, friendly segment. And boy, you guys got nice and heated there. That was fun. <laughs> uh, so a San Diego couple goes goofy for Disney. That's right. Michael and Diane Greening of San Diego visited three different Disney parks on Valentine's Day. Three different Disney parks. I thought there were only two in the country. One in Anaheim and one in Orlando. Oh no, they flew to Tokyo, Anaheim, and Orlando in one day. 28 hours to be exact because Tokyo is 14 hours behind us. Let's take a look at some of the pictures there as far as uh, the greenings. Yes, uh, there, there they are. I believe that's the Tokyo one because that doesn't look familiar to me in any capacity. Uh, do we have them uh, anywhere else, guys? I, I, we probably have them. Yep, that's definitely the Orlando one. I've been there on several occasions despite not having kids when I went, which was a little bit weird. And then uh, finally, obviously, the one in uh, Anaheim. Uh, so there you go. Uh, I may have done that slightly out of order. That's probably the one in Orlando. And it truly is a small world after all. And here's why I'm not impressed. All right, so you did three in one day. What about Euro Disney? Uh -huh. Couldn't fly to Paris, could you? But who celebrates their anniversary like that? I, I got engaged at a, a little restaurant in Hoboken. So <laughs> on our anniversary, we go back to Hoboken and we're done. Right. That's it. I Flying to packing. Tokyo. I, that, yeah. You know what that must have cost? $15,000 to do But it's love. Disney. I get it. I get it completely. I spent oh. my 40th birthday. I invited 40 of my closest friends, loaded them up on buses, and took them all to Disneyland. Wow, wow. did you? You're great wow. about Disney. I've never understood adults Have you been? going to oh, Disney. I love it. Yeah, I love when it. I was a kid. It's, it's, it's fun like, as an adult. They've adultized it. Yeah. Oh, has it changed? They have tequila now? and everything. It's great. It they, oh, great as long then. as they have tequila. So all you right. could go to yeah. Disney over Mars. Oh, absolutely. <laughs> <laughs> I got to come home. <laughs> You were right. stuck with those 40 Or you friends. just go on Space Mountain. Yeah, and, then, right. and, then and the rides are so the... much better at Disney than Mars I hear. <laughs> it's it's basically the same thing. That, I, would, I think I would have chosen something else. Yeah, yeah, you know what I would have chosen? I would have chosen actually to Photoshop and say I was in Tokyo, and that would have been that. <laughs> anyway, coming up next, it's time for yay or nay. Find out what craziness we have after the break. This is The Daily Wrap, only on Newsmax TV.